Hello and welcome back. We are once again trying to fix a PlayStation 4. Uh, this time a Slim, which are not my favorite to work on. So many screws, so many little tiny screws, but that's another story. But um, this one, um, I don't remember if it was said no power. No, it said it, it shuts back off, that's what it was. Um, so we've got it hooked up, got the monitor on. Let's see what she does. We go on and right back off. And if I press the power button again, nothing. Eject, nothing. So if I unhook the power cord, wait a few seconds. Plug it back in. Do we now get a beep? Like I hit eject. Yeah, and it tries to come on. It goes right back off. So, yeah, we've got a very fast shutdown on this one. Um, maybe it's a supply. I've got to see if I have a spare supply to try in here. Um, we'll try that. We'll see, we're going to try to figure out if it's the power supply or not first. Top cover is off, and you can kind of see what it looks like in here. Yeah, there's going to be a roach problem in this one, I'm pretty sure. So let me see if I can get this power supply out. Maybe do some testing on that. Oh, and just a quick note. It looks as though steel sealed from the factory. Hmm. Maybe. Or oh, somebody's got a a very nice piece of black tape they stuck over it. We'll see. Here's a quick view of the bottom side before I uh, get the uh, air compressor a hold of this thing. It has some uh, deceased residents in it. And I'm kind of, I'm betting they've killed the power supply. They don't usually kill, you know, the PlayStation itself. They kill the supply where the higher voltages are located. So, yeah, let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. I have the uh, supply out and uh, I really wish I had one to swap in its place. Let me show you the model number. This is a, uh, where's the model, ADP160FR, which I always try to remember. FR means, I'll say, freaking round. If you notice, the pins, the four pin connector, those are, it takes round pins. And the only spare one I have, which I just, I just fixed here today. Uh, if you can see it, that has square pins. So, which so I have a note on top, square pins. So not all the slim supplies are swappable without, you know, swapping out that connector or something. So that leaves me only one option, that's to go ahead and crack this supply open and see if we can bring it back to life. Um, assuming that's it, we still don't know if it's the the uh, PS4 itself or the supply. I'm betting it's the, the supply. Once I see roaches, uh, my money's on power supply being damaged because we definitely have a roach problem. So let me get this cracked open and we'll get in on the workbench and see if we can bring it back to life. Well, I opened her up, took the covers off, and you can you can see the evidence. We've had a small explosion. Uh, I'm not sure. There's a lot of black soot around that uh, resistor there, which I'm rather certain is the uh, current sample for the 12 volts, 0.035, which I'm not going to have on hand. Um, but I'm not really sure, you know, did it, because it looks in great health, the resistor does, other than the soot all around it. So, well, we're going to have to get it inside and let's just see if it's bad or not. Well, we are inside on the workbench, taking a closer look at this disaster we have in front of us. And something I noticed as I was cleaning it up before I brought it in, there was a, uh, right in here, there was a roach body laying right in here. And it had, if you look, whatever, I don't, I'm not sure what potential this is at. That goes right up here. And 
I'm wondering if we've got some high voltage over on the 12 volts, which I think this is 12 volts. Um, let's look at the other side of the board. See, there's the uh, the output connectors. So let me check. Maybe that's not 12 volts. Let's see if that resistor is, is still good. I'm a little curious now. Uh, in the mega ohms. That's going to be a no. 2.8 mega ohms. Okay. So that has gotten blown out. I'm not sure if that's in the 12 volt circuit or the 5 volt. Let's see. You know what? I think that's going to be at the 400 volt level. Um, yeah, here's this, here's that resistor. And right over here, you see negative and positive. That's um, one of the main filter caps. Yeah, there are two. There are two big filter caps. Let's see if I can get it right there. 450 volt, 68 microfarad. That's their legs. So yeah, we're dealing with uh, some high voltages here. Maybe we just blew out the current sample. You know, let me check my parts bag for 0 0.035. No, not gonna happen. <sighs> what did we short to? That's the question. Let's see, this right here, is a diode D11. Um, I got a continuity mode. Let's just see if we have something shorted right here. Uh, we're getting negative voltages. You see negative uh, negative resistance. You see negative resistance on a meter. That means there's DC voltage there. So I'm going to have to discharge that filter cap, which I have a resistor laying right here. I think this is uh, 47 ohms or 47. I'm not sure if it's 47 ohms, 47k ohms. I should probably measure it, but I've used this before to discharge these caps. Well, let me do that. Because, yeah, if you're getting negative resistance readings, you've got a charged cap. And I really don't want to work on this thing with a charged cap. We'll just measure it for the heck of it. Why not? DC volts. What is sitting across this capacitor right here? Overload because I'm in 20 volt range. Uh, let's just change it to 200 volts. Um, I'll lead you backwards. So we have 100 and. 5 volts. Discharging very slowly. And that, that will bite you. That, that capacitor can be charged up to about 400 volts in normal operation. Uh, so it's, it's been discharging, you know, for a little while here. I'm going to try to help it along with a resistor. What is the value of this resistor I've got? Because I'm kind of curious now. It's a big sand type resistor that I got out of a television or something. 47 ohms. Okay. So I'm going to use that to discharge this cap right here. All right. Now, what do we measure across that capacitor? I'm in a 
resistance mode, so that doesn't help any DC volts. There we go. Less than a volt. It's kind of charging up some. They'll, they'll kind of regenerate some, some charge over time. It's kind of soaked into its layers. But we're we're not going to be getting negative resistance readings now. Nothing there. Oh, let me get you back in the shot. I'm checking on this uh, diode structure here. 442. Well, these leads are they're parallel, aren't they? So is that one diode or is that two in a package? Because these leads are, are parallel. It has a uh, tab with a leg still stuck on it. And it has these leads here. So it's not shorted. I'm 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 thinking that's two diodes in there, but they're they're using them in parallel. 443, which I use resistance mode a lot with this meter on continuity mode, but I'll, I'll show you what it, what it shows in uh, diode check. It's going to say 0.443. There you go. That's why I don't always switch to diode mode. I can I can figure out if it's shorted or not in continuity mode. So that's not shorted. That's good. Um, what is this? I'm just going to start looking at some things nearby. I see a, uh, the legs of a uh, transistor right there. Do we have a short there? Let's see. Nine ohms. Point two ohms. Well, it's only shorted in every direction it can be shorted in. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, what is that animal? Okay, that's a uh, transistor uh, mounted to a heat sink, which I've had to replace these before. That's it right here. I can't tell you the model number of it because it's covered, but it's Q6. Q6 has gone down fighting, but it lost to a roach. Short. Short, very, very short, very, very short, okay. Since that has shorted and the legs aren't labeled as to which one's the gate, I don't think they're, they're not labeled on either side, are they? Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. If we have shorted to gate, then we have likely have some collateral damage. Um, you know, with whatever drives the gate circuit on this thing. So we'll have to look into that. So we're going to need at least a MOSFET. Uh, did we blow the fuse? Uh, we didn't blow the main fuse because our, our cap is uh, charged up. But I'll give it, we'll give it a quick check. There's the main fuse. 4 amp fuse. Should be good. It is. Then there's a fusible resistor over here. Right in there. Which I believe is a 0 0.16. And it is still good. Those things go all, they blow a lot. That one has survived. I'm very surprised by that. I'm just looking at some burn marks on this board. This board has been hot over here. No, it's a whole other part of the circuitry. This is over in the 5 volt area. We'll have to take a look at that. That has been smoking really, really warm. Another little spot there. I don't think I've ever seen one of these things run so hot. But PS4 Slims do run warm. There is also some remnants of a uh, roach right there, too. You can see it if I, right in there. Not sure if that's a problem. Oh, now he's crumbling to pieces on my workbench. That's great. So...
Well, that, that resistor that has opened looks to be some sort of current sample from the main B plus or no I'm sorry I am wrong that is going to be a current sample in the source of that MOSFET that makes more sense this side right down here this side of this MOSFET is that tied to the uh, is this the yeah okay there's the negative negative capacitor negative side of the capacitor there's positive there's negative so yeah this is going to be the return path for this MOSFET that makes more sense so this is where it returns right here and this should go up to I'm guessing the source right up here it goes to a ferrite bead right in here let me make sure it's in focus to this MOSFET and this MOSFET has purchased the farm or bought the ranch however you want to say it it's dead so maybe we just need a MOSFET eh, I'll have to I'll have to uh, find something to sub for that for testing purposes I'll have to order some of those resistors I know I don't have any of those where is the circuitry? I'm going to guess this is the source, this is the drain, this is the gate. So where does this gate drive come from? Through a ferrite bead. Back over this way, back over this way, back over here. I've seen the, oh yeah, look at there. 51, I'll use it as a 51 ohm resistor and a diode in parallel here. But look at that resistor. I don't know what that was. Not enough of it left to tell. And also right here and that is part of the power factor correction because that is a, I know that is the 1612A3 that is the power factor corrector chip and I do have some of those and I'm probably going to need one but that I'm going to have to find a picture of another one of these boards online to figure out I think that's I think that was a 100 I think that's a 10 ohm resistor but I, I'm not sure it looks like it's in series with the drive, doesn't it? Look right here. Coming out of here, right through there, to here, to here, right over to here, and this goes off to the gate of that MOSFET. So, that's also in line. This stuff usually survives, but we'll check. Let's check that uh, 51 ohm resistor. Look at there. Perfectly fine. And this is toast right here. Whatever this is. It just reads open. And this will also, I do believe. Yes, that reads open. So, yeah. We're going to need the uh, power factor corrector IC. Um, just looking around it, see if there's anything else burned around it. I'm gonna have, I'll have to find a pair. I don't, I don't have another one of these supplies, I'm rather sure. I might have a, a, a PS4 Slim that I haven't fixed yet that has one in it just like it. Um, but I may have to open one up to get those resistor values. I'll look online. I'll do that sometimes. I'll look online for, for pictures of the PCB and see if I can get those, those numbers off of it. Because I need, I need both of those. Okay, let me see what I can find out. Well, it is the following morning, and after searching last night for, for pictures online of this board to get the part numbers off of, I searched through my own uh, parts stash and came up with this, which is a board I've been pulling parts off of. It's not identical, but it's very, very close. You can see this is a ADP160ER AAA, and this is a 160FR AAA. And I've already pulled the transformer off of this one. But if we look in that particular area, if I can see with my phone here, let's get in there. Um, let me find a pointer. Let's see, where are we looking? 
Hard to see without the microscope. Oh, this area right in here. Um, we needed the value of these resistors right up here. Like this is the uh, power factor correction. Right? It's not going to go into focus there. So we got burn resistors here and here. And this IC is most likely bad too. And of course our current sense resistor right here. But if we look on this other board, this donor board, which is a slightly different model, it has that exact same layout looks like on those resistors. Exact same numbering. R96, R39, D63. They're in that same position, same order. And here's our current resistor, current sampling resistor. So we may have all the parts we need right here. I'm not sure about the uh, MOSFET, but I'll check it. So, but at the very least, we now know what our component values are. Looks like it was a 4.7K and a um, 10 ohm on the other one. So at least now we know. I've swapped out quite a few components from our donor board to our hopefully working board. Um, now we are at the point of seeing what happens. I've got the load. I need to turn the load on. I'm not sure what it's set for. Six amps. Okay. Now we'll give it like four amps. We'll let it start off easy. Um, so yeah, the main part we were working on was in the power factor correction circuit. Um, hmm. I do hope this thing doesn't blow up because I've spent a lot of time on it. 
Uh, first thing to check is going to be if we have the 5 volt standby. Okay, here's the thing in the shot. I'm going to apply AC power to this and see what blows up. Okay, we're hot. Do we have 5 volt standby? Ground to here. 4.8 volts. All right, 5 volt standby is there. Um, but that really doesn't test what we've been working on. We had 5 volt standby before. The power factor correction circuit doesn't really get kicked into gear and, and running until you apply, to, until you try to make it go to 12 volts, until you enable the supply to output 12 volts. That's when the voltage across these capacitors here will go from 150 volts to closer to 400 volts. Um, so that's when we'll find out if the power factor correction circuit is working. So I can get some clean tweezers so I can jump her from 5 volt standby into the uh, AC-DC standby pin. Oh boy. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Nothing happened. All right, I've been doing some more digging. And of course, this is the area we were working in earlier, the power factor correction circuit. And now it looks like this IC here is also shorted. This is the DAP049. This is really the, um, the IC that drives the um, MOSFETs for the 12 volt generation. So this IC is connected to these MOSFETs way down here, which may or may not be shorted, one of them. Um, but the Z-Zeners right over here are also connected to this. Uh, these two, uh, the label J3, I believe these are 18 volt Zeners. I have to find my, I've got some of those, I know, but yeah, we've got some other damage here, but I believe this IC here is shorted. I do have these on hand, and I have these Zeners. Um, so I'm gonna pull this IC off and see if, see if I still read a short on these Zeners. I'm hoping when I pull this, that'll go away. And I'm not sure about the health of these MOSFETs down here, but uh, yeah, we've got a little more damage to, to fix.
Well, once again, we are ready to see if we have 12 volts this time. Um, let's give it some AC power and let's just see what happens. All right, we're hot. Load is ready. Do we have plus 12? We do not. Well, here we are again. And I wanted to share with you um, my latest discovery of how much of an idiot I am. So, looking at the microscope, you remember this resistor I replaced here. Um, you remember these MOSFETs over here? I changed out this MOSFET. This one seems okay. I did change this one out, along with some resistors up here. I think that one got changed because it was burned open. Um, but I got to looking at um, the gate connections to both of these MOSFETs. And let me show you what I discovered. Like, let me follow it. Right. Like this one here. You see that this is the gate connection. Runs over here, over here, through this network of resistors and the diode. This way, up here. Runs along, long, 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 right this way. Right underneath this resistor. But it never makes it over to the IC, that DAP49. Because of this right here, I'm in continuity mode. Yeah, nothing. Remember when I was, uh, you may have saw in the video earlier, I was grinding this glue underneath away so this, so this resistor would lay flat. I was using my little grinding pin, which is very handy. Well, apparently it's also really good for slashing a hole in the trace because uh, that had to have been what I've done. So I have no gate drive to the MOSFET that I just changed out. So, let me see if I can fix that and see what happens. Hopefully third time is the charm, as they say. Um, I, I did end up you know, pulling this uh, current sense resistor and had three or four traces that were damaged that I actually cut completely into when I was grinding with my grinding pin. So I, I repaired those, put some conformal coating over them, put the resistor back down. And hopefully we're at the point of making 12 volts now. It's been a, been a long road to try to get to this point. Uh, let me give you some AC power. Hey, we're already making 12 volts. That doesn't sound right. Why is it making 12 volts already? Hmm. I mean, I'm kind of happy about it, but why is it making 12 volts already? I haven't told it to come on yet. Hmm. Don't tell me we have more problems. Well, maybe, maybe fourth time is a charm. I um, 
track that down pretty quickly. The problem with it, you know, trying to run all the time like it was. Um, I'll try to give you some close-ups, but right over in this area, there's a transistor. I think it's Q41 right here that had shorted. And I knew from past experience this transistor is what switched the power to these ICs down here. The, the um, um, what do you call this chip? The A12, well, I can't remember the model number of that chip, but the uh, power factor corrector chip and the uh, DAP49, which controlled the, you know, the 12-volt switching. Um, it's like a 14-volt, something like that, uh, supply that goes to those things. But it switched over here, and that thing, that transistor, sure enough, had shorted. Um, I kind of kind of only think it could have been, because I knew that's where it came from. So, let's see if we're acting normally. Now, we were making 12 volts earlier. We were just making it all the time, whether we wanted to or not. Okay, and let's turn on some AC power. Okay, that's good. We're not making 12 volts right now. And let me jump with the proper pins. There we go. That's how you should behave. That looks that looks fine. Okay, let's try to wrap this video up. It's gone well, gone on way too long. So let me get this in the chassis, and we'll just confirm that it will power the uh, that PS4 Slim chassis out in the garage. Finally. All right, we're back out in the garage. I've got the supply back in the chassis. This has been a long, hard road. This has been about four days. I just My uh, real job was getting in the way of working on them. Uh, this is just a kind of a hobby. But uh, let's see. Let's see what we've done here. All right. That sounds good. And there we are. We are coming on. I'm gonna. I've still got to clean this thing up. You can still see it has roach residue all over the chassis itself. I was just focused on that supply. But uh, I think we've got a winner here. I think she will live again. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, I know it was a long time. This video has probably gotten way too long, and I apologize for that. I'm going to try to cut it down as best I can. But uh, if you enjoyed that, thought it was interesting and entertaining, please give me a thumbs up. And I will see you in the next repair. Bye for now.